Are you tired of playing repetitive, boring, copy-paste video games that are also lackluster and fail to deliver? Like Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 and Battlefield 2042? Well, my friends, look no further, and this is not sponsored. Gundam Evolution just released, and let me tell you something right now. Everyone knows that I complain a lot. I streamed this game for 11 hours, and I swear to you, I complained three times, okay? Three times. You can go watch the VODs. This game is actually fun, and I'm here to tell you about it. But I'm also here to tell you about our sponsor, which is Raid Shadow Legends! Are you tired of playing games that just simply don't function how they should? Luckily, Raid Shadow Legends is here yet again to save us from the suffering. Use my QR code or link down below to try the game for free on mobile or PC. And this time around, Raid has something really sinister up their sleeves. The Endgame Tower Dungeon, Doom Tower. This dungeon requires you to have your stuff together with your champion selections, as you're going to want to remove all the debuffs and have pretty high resistance to everything you can imagine. As a huge fan of turn-based combat games, I love the strategy required to get through this area. You're not going to be able to beat it without thinking. And on top of that, Raid Shadow Legends just announced a new mechanic called Awakening and a new absolutely brutal dungeon in the Iron Twins Fortress. If you are talented enough to actually make it through the Iron Twins, you will see a gigantic payoff in the form of being able to actually awaken your champions to choose a more powerful blessing that can transform them and how they perform in battle. But it doesn't end there because Death Knight has something to tell you as well. Hey everybody, Death Knight here to tell you all about the Death Knight Hunt event. Raid's given away Ultimate Death Knight, a, a champion that was a, supposed to be an upgraded version of me, but uh, turns out is totally not. Just a new awesome legendary champion. So I guess just log in and play seven times between now and October 27th and Ultimate Death Knight is yours. Great. Enjoy. Enter the promo code DKRISES for a ton of free items to instantly upgrade Ultimate Death Knight to level 50, 5 star ascension, or whatever, I don't care, back to you. And all you have to do to get started for free is scan the QR code in the corner or click the link in the description. New players will automatically be rewarded with a free starter pack and get awesome in-game loot such as this. You can find your newly acquired items in your inbox for the next 30 days only. So thank you so much for Raid Shadow Legends sponsoring this video. Be sure to use the QR code or click the link in the description to try the game out for free. And let's get right into the video. Gundam Evolution is the most fun I've had with FPS games in the past four to five years. And I seriously can't stress that enough. The game's free to play. It's a completely new take on a 6v6 hero shooter format because it's set within the Gundam anime universe, so you're playing as, like, some gigantic robots, and if, if Gundam anime fans are watching this, I'm sorry, I'm a complete, absolute normie, okay? I don't know anything. I literally was calling the, them Gundams. Apparently, you're supposed to call them mobile suits. I didn't know that, all right? You're gonna have to speak to my secretary about that, but anyway, you play as gigantic robots with crazy abilities, and shockingly, the game is very well balanced. Typically with hero shooters, you're afraid of like, oh my god, you know, okay, so I'm getting one-shotted, you know, this character's busted. There honestly isn't really anything to complain about with this game. And I sit here and I dug for things to complain about, and I could find like maybe one or two, like, okay, the sniper headshot hitbox is maybe a little too big. And other than that, like, I, I will struggle to find something that I dislike about the balance of this game. And that is insane to say, with a game with 17 playable characters in it. The map design, amazing. I haven't even, the maps are so good, I don't notice I'm playing in them. I don't know if that makes sense to anyone, but like, I'm going through the map and everything just makes sense. There's no part of the map where I'm like, okay, well this needs to be moved and there's no cover here and blah, blah, blah. It's like all these maps are really good. I haven't complained a single time about them. They flow really well. All the game modes fit really well on them. And they're just, they're obviously purpose built for competitive play and it shows. Now, I will admit one or two things here that really, really sort of confuse me about Gundam Evolution because the game got a ton of stuff right, like an abnormal amount of things right. But they did get some very strange things wrong, namely the fact that this game is capped to 120 FPS, which is very bizarre to me because this game runs on Unreal Engine 4. And Unreal Engine 4 does not have any, like, FPS-tied physics or any engine limitations that would make it uh, unable to run past 120 FPS. So I'm really not sure why it's capped at 120, 
especially when it's competing against Overwatch, which lets you just unlock FPS, to my knowledge at least, uh, and just have unlimited. Like, you can get 3 million FPS in Overwatch 2 uh, if your computer allows it. So, that's very confusing. But I do have to say, while some of you are probably cringing at, like, oh, 120 FPS cap, the game, for whatever voodoo witchcraft reason, is completely fine and feels amazing on this 120 FPS cap. I don't even notice it, and I'm super picky about these things. And that is saying something. So I would say that while 120 FPS cap is definitely a major problem and they need to change it, it sounds worse than it actually is. And I urge you to not let that deter you from trying this game because I think you'll be surprised just as I was as to how little that actually ends up mattering. Now, something that is not up for debate, in my opinion, uh, that actually really does matter, for whatever reason, this game is not out in a lot of countries around the world. I don't think Australia can play, New Zealand can't play, China can't play, some smaller countries in Europe can't play, the entirety of South America can't play, and that's very confusing. But they did specifically state they are planning on expanding to all of these, you know, closed regions, and my only guess to this is maybe some countries in Europe that have loot box laws, uh, you know, maybe that's some sort of legal thing, and you can't play the game in Europe, but everywhere else it doesn't really make any sense. So, I definitely hope sooner than later the game will be available to play, worldwide, just as it should be. Now, as far as gameplay is concerned, like I said earlier, there are 17 different playable characters in this game. Uh, this game is free to play. All of the characters seem to be useful. I don't find a single character in this game that I would deem to be useless. Every single pick has its use case scenario. And I would also say that almost every single pick in the entire game can, you know, 1v1 gunfight. This is a much heavier, you know, uh, fight and kill game. It's way more fast paced and way more kill oriented than Overwatch is. Because I know a lot of people complain with Overwatch with, you know, oh, I'm shooting shields all the time. Oh, the 6v6 is taking 10 minutes and no one's died yet. That does not happen at all in this game, and there is a bit of death balling in this game, but just know that individual talent shines through in Gundam Evolution. You can make big plays that really, really matter just by hitting a, a stun, hitting a uh, awesome grenade, you know, denying area, flanking. You can make big plays in this game individually, and as a team, that opens up a ton of different play styles. Now, as far as some of my personal favorite picks that I like to play as, I typically gravitate towards, you know, more gun heavy. I don't really like the melee stuff. So I play people like Pale Rider, Gundam, Turn A Gundam, Dawn Trooper, and Ashamar right now with a little bit of like GM Sniper 2 thrown in there if I feel like it's fine. And I'll just go over some of these guys abilities. So Gundam is the guy with the flail that you might see in the background. He has a flail that's an unhit stun. He has a shield that tanks a thousand damage. He has sort of an SLR laser rifle that does a ton of damage if you hit a headshot. It's actually very, very substantial damage uh, in the mid-range. And his ultimate ability is basically just throws a gigantic napalm grenade at you that kills you. Dom Trooper is the big purple guy with a rocket launcher that has a laser and he throws mines. Uh, I really, really like him. 1200 HP, bit of like a mid-tanky character, great for defensive play. Um, but can also do a great deal of damage if you're good with direct rockets. And I don't know, dude, he, this game's just great. I like the variety of characters. A lot of them are very similar to characters you'd find in Overwatch, but with their own flair on them, which I find is really great. And I absolutely plan on doing a complete breakdown of actually every single character you can play in this entire game. So if you will enjoy that content, hit the subscribe button and like the video. I'd really appreciate that. But uh, as far as other characters, GM Sniper 2 is kind of like uh, Widowmaker from Overwatch. You know, he has the ability to one-shot headshot, I believe, any unit in the game below 1,200 HP. So if you have 1,100 HP and you hit a headshot on him, they just get one-shotted. Uh, he has this little, like, machine gun on his head, actually, that you can use. That's one of his abilities. He has a jump pad, and his alt is basically wall hacks. And in his alt, you can use the jump pad to jump ADS, which you can't do without his ultimate ability being active, so you can get jump shot headshots. And all the stuff I just described isn't even the half of it. And we, we haven't even spoken about, you know, Sazabi, who's this gigantic tank with 1,400 health and a 1,400 HP shield. He throws an axe, which he can dash towards. He can dash towards his teammates as well. 
And that's actually one thing I forgot to mention. Every single character in the entire game has one or more dashes. So the heavier characters typically have one dash, medium characters two, and light classes like Zaku have three or Barbados. Um, this is this makes the movement of this game fantastic. It's very fluid. There's no acceleration on the movement. You hit a key and you go in that direction. And if you want to change directions, you hit another key and you go in that direction instantaneously. Uh, the movement's fantastic. Wouldn't change a single thing about it. And uh, definitely would recommend you guys try this game if you've been an FPS purgatory like the majority of people have been uh, for a long time now. So thank you so much for watching, I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, hit the subscribe button. I plan on covering this game uh, regularly, as well as, you know, Battlefield 2042. And I might cover COD, but honestly, guys, that game's looking like hot. And I mean hot trash. So I, I doubt it. Um, but yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.